Subscribe to our YouTube Club 520. Uh, we clowning on that mother. Just hit the button. <laughs> God. Don't ask more questions. Subscribe. <laughs> All right, we back. Another episode of Club 520 Podcast. We on the road for a special guest. We got to be in a special place, man. We pulled up to Phoenix one time for the camp. Long away the episode, man. They been asking sure. about him. Happy we could deliver, but to my far left, we got my dog, Bishop B. Hen out the pearlies. How you what, Nasty? Cool and nasty. Let's get to it, baby. Hey, damn, I got to tell you, man, he got a uniform, so you to get him out of uniform and your shoes, that's a big yeah. deal. Nah, hey. I fuck with the Adidas, you know what I mean? Three stripes forever. <laughs> yeah, we had to make sure he was straight, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. He got the lace. He changed the laces in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. I freaked him out. I, I made him yeah, me, yeah, for yeah. sure. Put <laughs> your flavor on it. For sure. To my right, my dog, Young Nacho, Young Teague. How you what, man? Chilling, man. I'm hyped. We got one of the special players in the building, Top 75. Person I'm a huge fan of. I'm really shitty. I ain't get that color wave, but... <laughs> I oh, make bro. it work, you know what I'm saying? You're a big so, three player. This league nigga <laughs> shit up here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was gonna say, man, we talk about it. it's good to see you back in the, in the three stripes, man. I mean, I gotta work something out with Jr. I'm about to go on my little rent like Bassy. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> shout out to the guy. Man. I guess the Jr. needs some good press, man. Shout out to Jr. Shout out to the guy. We love you. We love you. We love you, guy. Uh, but to my left, man, we got a special, special guest, man. One of the coldest to touch of basketball, like my bro said, top seventy five. Uh, and he get busy off the court, you know what I'm saying? Music going crazy. And if you do too much, you know what I'm saying? The hands is legit too. We got one of the coldest to ever do it. Dame Dollar, Damian Lily, appreciate you sliding on this big dog. For sure, bro. Appreciate y'all having me. Yeah, for sure. Long time coming, man. People been asking for this episode. You know what I'm saying? We trying to make it happen all-star, but you no, know, the weather was too fucking crazy. Yeah. But we got straight to it, man. But listen, we gotta start with the origins with you, man, because yo, 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 yo history, bro, yo, yo career is so crazy. Be here, we gotta talk about the high school days, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, I wanted to tap in with you. Was the, uh, let's go back all the way to AAU. Was you rocking with the guys, or did you just, you know, link up with some guys that was already nice in the city with the Rebels? Nah, shit, that was like my childhood, neighborhood type program. <laughs> yeah, um, okay. Like I started with them in elementary school, and shit, them was like my first real friends yeah. outside of my cousins and my family. So shit, it was once I start getting nice, then like the soldiers and all those other, you know, NorCal elite, we had a couple other like uh, programs that was sponsored. You know, they was getting all the shoes. Yeah. But then I was like, like these my people. You know what I'm nah, saying? that's so hard, bro. I stayed with the team. Uh, shit, we was in the lower level tournaments then we got older we started getting into the other ones because we was like way better but okay um that was it i stayed with the the local program nah yeah I was, you and him got a similar yeah, story he rocked with his guys too that's yeah, why i wanted know? to ask you about that i yep. did that but yeah i switched my senior year <laughs> <laughs> I so, could rock out with the guys <laughs> like that bro i wouldn't get no offers cause i was that, like i hey, figured this same, out bro now nah, we had the same team we just went to one of those sponsor teams mm -hmm. that's all it was yeah, I ain't have, we didn't, I ain't getting no offers till the very last summer. That's me. Yeah. That's how I yeah, was. Same. Going yeah. to see your senior year? Yeah. Last jump yeah. down. Yeah, that's yeah. How I Who was your first one? Weber State. Oh, uh, okay. Damn. Yeah, that was my first offer. I remember we had, uh, we played against this dude that was from Texas. I don't even remember his name. But it was a 9 a.m. game. We get there, it was empty. We was, there was literally our team, they team, it was another game next to us, and there was one coach there that was a coach from Weaver. But he was there to see me and the other dude. Ah, uh, damn, and okay. After that game, shit, they just offered me right after the game. Kill, That's buddy. It. Yeah, it was over <laughs> fast. <laughs> Denver took his spot. That was his Dylan order <laughs> story right there. It was over fast, too. <laughs> nah, I seen sure. one coach, that was the first time a coach ever came to our game, too. So I was That's like, crazy. Damn. damn. See, I was just playing in front of aunties, uncles. <laughs> Not even that, for real. Nobody. Damn. If we was in Oakland, everybody came. But on oh, the road, okay. we was. It was just us. Damn, that's tough. Damn, that's crazy. So for you to go to that, you know, say head until senior year, it's just start going crazy for you. you. Obviously, you already made that decision. You was rocking with Weber State because they showed interest in you early. Yeah. How was it going to your like getting to college after that crazy high school career? I mean, when I got there, it was uh, it was cool. Like everybody was cool. Uh, they was just telling me, like, man, you got to earn your spot. And I remember thinking, like, man, like, I'm the best player they done had come here in a minute. And they like, mm -hmm. you know, you miss class, we sending you home. It was just hella. Uh, Damn. They just ran a tight ship. You know what I'm saying? It was first day I got there in the summer. It was conditioning. We running stadiums, all this crazy shit. And I remember thinking to myself, like, 
shit, I don't think I'm really cut for this. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. Like, I remember dying after conditioning and thinking, like, I really don't know if this shit is going to work out because this crazy if this would it take. So I got through the first day. We started playing pickup. I couldn't score. Like, everybody was stronger, faster. I couldn't get nothing done. So that was kind of when the, the transition for me started where I was like, all right, I got to. I got to answer the call. Like, this shit harder than I thought it was going to be. And then from there, it was, that was it. You know what I'm saying? I came off the bench like the first four or five games. And uh, then I got to the starting lineup. They had me at the two. And then the the guy who was starting at the one, he actually here at camp, he was like five, six, five, seven, but he was just a straight scorer. And then they swept, they switched us. They made me the point guard and him the two because I was more like a, Playmaker mm -hmm. score and he was yeah. just getting buckets. And when they switched us, that's when that's when shit changed. That's crazy. That sounded like you you talking about getting recruited. You know what I'm saying? They tell you, hey, you the best. You the, we can't hey, wait till you get here and you get there, be like, hey, you ain't really shit. You got on your spot. Nah, for real. Yeah, nah, for real. Me and him got a very similar story because that's how I was at Wake Forest. I didn't start my first five, six games. We had Ish Smith. Yeah. So Ish was Shout starting Ish. at the point, and then I came in playing a two. And like you said, it kind of switched. Yeah. Even though Ish was a uh, I was a more of a scorer than Ish, but he broke his foot. That's how I got a chance to play point. But I was just thinking, I'm like, shit, you was a pass first? <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> shit, I know you for buckets. Because the first time I seen you when you was at Weber State, it was my guy, Lou. I'll never forget. I think Shout it might have been your junior year. Because my brother was a senior in high school, I think. And he was like, hey, it's this dude at Weber State that's nasty. <laughs> and I was like, he nasty? He was like, man, he reminded me of like Steph and them at Day uh, Davidson. I'm like, oh, this nigga gassing now. Like, I ain't, I ain't going for all that. <laughs> then he was like, no, you got to watch him. So he, we, the game came on. Y'all came on late as hell. We watched it. And you were shooting fadeaways. I'm like, buddy got the green. He wilding. <laughs> like, he wilding. Yeah, you, and, but you had bounce. I'm like, he was like, bro, he going to go top five. I was like, we for state. He like, yeah. I was like, they ain't playing nobody. He was like, T, you tripping, bro. Watch what he doing. And then the next year, my brother was in the draft. And I'll never forget, I was like, hey, you got to go against this dude named Dame. You got to get a workout with him. And they looked at me and said, I ain't about to work out against him. <laughs> <laughs> I said, why? He was like, man, he called. He going top five. I ain't working out against him. I was like, he going top five? He was like, yeah, he liked that. He said, yeah, I seen you at Adidas Nations, I think. Yeah, that's, he was, bro, that's, that's the funniest story because when I, nobody knew who I was at Adidas Nations. Yeah, he was telling me that. But I seen, like, all of them. Obviously, I knew who. All them niggas was. Yeah. But when I got there, everybody was like, uh, just staring at me. Like, who is, like, because they all knew each other. I yeah, was the yeah. only person nobody knew. So I remember one day I see them all, like, on the baseline, like, in a group. And they all talking and they just kind of, like, looking at me. So I'm just kind of staring back, like, man, this is one of them moments I got to stand my ground. Like, they all mm -hmm. friends. Like, I don't know if they think I'm a sucker or something. Yeah. Like, so they all had a little talk or whatever. And then Will Barton walked over there like, hey, like, you D-Rose's cousin? Like, they thought I got in camp because I was D-Rose's cousin. I'm like, nah, I go to Weber. They like, oh, okay. I'm like, so the whole time, I'm thinking they talking shit or something. They thinking I'm in camp because I'm D-Rose's cousin. Like, that's how they thought I got in camp. That's crazy. My crazy, brother told me bro. that. He was like, bro, he was so cold. And he was like, nah, he cold. And then you went, nah, I played you my rookie. I'll never forget. Cause now I always had this thing about rookies. I'm like, if I can kill him the first time, he gonna it's gonna be in his head a little bit mm -hmm. when we play him. And I seen you watch, you sit there, you and DV, y'all sit there before the game and like watch people warm up. I'm like, oh, why are you watching me? Like, what are you on? <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm about to get in his head. So I start warming up hard. Y'all know I ain't gonna warm up hard. <laughs> start warming up hard, shooting like, yeah. He wasn't paying me no mind. He was like. I was like, you know what? I'm going at him first place. I'm telling people, like, hey, we going to see if he can hoop. I'm like, damn, this nigga cold. He gave me with that Kyrie moment. Remember when I called you about Kyrie? <laughs> I called my brother. I said, hey, the dude, dang, man, he going to be raw. Book said, duh. What? <laughs> yeah, he about to be the one. And after that, it was over with. I was like, yeah, it's over with. He the one. Yeah, yeah that's man. crazy, man. That's like, I, it's crazy for you to say that because – I'm thinking the same thing against you. Like, I remember, mm -hmm. like, shit, you, Darren Collison. It was people that they never was talking about like that, that I'm like, these the, these the matchups that be the hard matchups. Like, mm -hmm. fast, getting to the rim, you got the ball. So it's like, 
it's crazy for me to hear you say that when we come into the game and they like, you know, Jeff T, you know, he fast, he can shoot, he gonna be coming off and transition, you gotta stand. I'm like, damn, like, it's gonna be a tough one. Goran Dragic, it was the same thing. Yeah, like, Dragic. you had them matchups where it was <laughs> like, them the ones people ain't talking about. They gonna tell you about CP and Darren Williams, yeah. but it's them nights where you show up and it's like, bro, it's a, it's a, it's a tough matchup. I got it's a question, a man. Why the hell did you wear zero? <laughs> oh, don't do that. <laughs> I'm from Oakland. Respect. My college was in Ogden, Utah, and then I got drafted in Oregon. Oh, okay. I was just why you thought yeah, I can move on. I, well, I, I don't know. Drew Goodman, I was it? just making sure you didn't have they no weak ass story like him. <laughs> yeah, here they go. Nigga wants to be named after. I mean, where is number because of Drew? They had a mohawk this shit together in the league. So no, I was just asking yo, was, yo, was, yo from zero. Was Drew Gooden? <laughs> nah, it was Gilbert Arenas, bro. Gilbert was my favorite player. Can't fast nigga. Yeah, I can but move I on. I used to play though. with Drew Gooden on March Man. Hey, man this, yeah, hey, I can move on, man. Funny, Go on get an interview, man. I just had to ask that. What's yeah, so wrong with him, man? Don't listen to him, bro. Drew Gooden, y'all. No argue. <laughs> That's crazy. They gonna put the side by side up and this shit is gonna go with this. Luis, if you do that, bro, I'm quit. <laughs> Did you come into the league comfortable though, ready to go, or it took you a while? To... No, I came in. Um, I say I was comfortable, but I had like, I remember during the summer after I got drafted, I was like, my trainer was training Demar. He was at camp today. He was over yeah, there. Shout out to Debo. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw him. And he started taking me to L.A. with him, so I was playing. I was working out playing ones with Corey McGetty, Damn. Matt Barnes, Debo. Like, oh, okay. I was going against big wings, and they yeah. was all athletic, and they was all younger at that time. So when I started going to L.A. playing against them, and they was, like, backing up off me, and I'm winning spots and ones because I'm just hitting jumpers. They letting me shoot. Then they see I could shoot. They was pressing up into me. I was able to get around them. Yeah. Like, just those, like, couple weeks that I was able to go out there and get with them, that was when I was like, all right, like, I'm going to be straight. Uh, and I got yeah. to Summer League, and Summer League was kind of easy. Like, it wasn't really a lot of dudes that's actually in the league out there. And then my first preseason game was against Kobe, Steve Nash, all of them. So, like, I got broke in quick. Yeah, he was, was like, in the fire right, early then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, that's dope. And that's crazy. Like you said, even, you know what I'm saying, what you had to go through a Weeper being the number one option as later, that kind of prepares you to go and be ready for, for the, like, to be a franchise player. Yeah. A lot of times you go to school, you got to shoot a ball a lot. And then when you throw in that situation, you got to figure it out. So you had already been thrown in the fire. Yeah. And I can imagine playing pickup with uh, Corey McGetty and Matt Barnes, <laughs> you were getting no foul calls. Nah, they was, it was big and they was physical. So it was like, mm -hmm. shit, they wasn't calling no fouls. It really was no fouls. So it was, and I couldn't come in there calling fouls. Hell they wasn't no. going to respect it. So it was, that shit was definitely, it was definitely good for me, for sure. Did Kobe play in that first game? Yeah, he did. How was that? Shit, the first five minutes, I was just staring at him like. Oh, God. <laughs> like, that's, that's him Kobe. for real? You know yeah. That's a real person. Yeah, like, that's Kobe. But he, <clears throat> he wasn't paying me no mind. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, when yeah. I got on the court, I'm thinking, you know, he going to be like, welcome to the league, you know, something like that. He ain't say shit. Just, so that kind of, like, put me back into being a competitor because mm -hmm. it was like you naturally going to take it a little personal even if you feel like that's Kobe or that's Brown or whoever I was like right. damn he ain't say nothing so I'm like shit it's, it's either me waiting to, to be a fan or I got to do what I got to do uh, it kind of it flipped back to that you know after okay. that couple of minutes now I think it's dope that you got handed the ball as soon as you got in the league yeah. like I wanted to ask you you know, you know how it goes so like <laughs> if you didn't how you think your career would have went like if you would have had to sit and think about it, like, <laughs> that was the worst part of me. I had played, we about to interview Bibby one of these days, but I had to sit behind Bibby, yeah. and I used to just wait and wait and wait. And I, you kind of lose your confidence a little bit because you're like, it ain't no way I'm this sad. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> I'm glad they didn't do that to you. I'm glad you got handed the ball because, like you said, you're a top 75 player and one of the greatest to do it. Like, what you did you want that moment, like, to learn, or was you like, like being thrown in the fire? I mean, I think uh, – Shit, a lot of people's career be dependent on that. Like, it's yeah, a lot of real. dudes that if they come in and they get the ball right away, they could have – ain't no telling what they could have yeah, did. Yeah. That that changed people's careers. But when I got there, it was like coming from a small school, I was always telling myself, like, shit, I might be in the G League. Mm -hmm. I might be on the bench. I ain't, ain't no telling. But I think once I got there and they was like, you know, he can shoot. He ain't Thanks. scared. 
he playing with, you know, LaMarcus Aldridge. We was able to play off each other. They was just like, they let me go. And I think just like how I was able to get along with vets so fast. Like I played with Jared Jeffries and Ronnie Price. So once I was able to earn their respect and I was able to be on the court with them, that's when our coach was just kind of like, you know, he just let me learn. He just yeah. let me go. And I think that was a big part of it is like you said, being at Weber for four years, I was mm -hmm. an extension of the coach. So I knew how to I knew how to like get my my words off through the team. You know what I'm saying? I knew how to lead a team. I knew how to do the right thing. I knew what it took, you know what I'm saying, to like be the guy, but also like not make it all about me, where everybody felt like they part of it. So coming in and playing with Batum and Wes Matthews and LA and Robin Lopez, all them dudes, it was like, I knew how to be there and be the point guard they needed, but I knew how to not get in their way too and stop mm -hmm. them from being able to LA get his 24 attempts and yeah. <laughs> Batum handling the ball sometimes and Wes getting post-ups. Like I was aware of that because of my experience and being in school for four years. So ain't no telling how it would have went, bro. I think I would have I would have been straight regardless, but I think them giving me the ball right away to play is what kind of let me just jump out there and get on the track that I that I've been on. Yeah, facts. I was I'm ready. Uh, you already? Nah, I was in Atlanta. <laughs> I turned up to yeah, see, I went to the perfect environment yeah, yeah, too. Yeah. Like going to Portland, that shit was right by Oakland. Family could come. Yeah. Like some of my family moved up yeah. there. It was like quiet. It was a perfect environment. Did yeah, you get a mohawk when you got to the league? Man, or did you wait? <laughs> he on that <laughs> mohawk. <bro. laughs> nah, 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 but how was it playing with uh, L.A., man? We be we high on L.A. One of the more bro. underrated like, players. Yeah, man. Like, L.A. was like... Did that make the, the shit easier for you on the court? It made it way easier. Yeah. I mean, teams was really paying attention to him. So, yeah. like, being in a pick and roll with him, like, he popping, he making every jumper. I'm throwing it to him on the block. They going to get him. I'm standing there by myself, like coming off pick and rolls. His man trying to get back to him. So I'm getting like my rookie year, I, I started every game with an elbow pull up jumper off pick and roll. Like I literally one, two, three dribbles to the elbow pull up every yeah. time because they trying to get back to him. Mm -hmm. Then shit, once they saw I could make it, I still was getting pull up three off the pick and roll damn near every time. So like playing with him, I was like one thing I think about in my career is like if he would have never went to San Antonio, we would have won at least once already. Cause he, I feel not good. Cause I would have came into my own, mm -hmm. but he was that good. Facts. Like he was that good. It was facts and Batum. Motherfucker sleep on Batum. Batum was nice, bro. Bro, we just seen Nick Batum kill yeah, last postseason, bro. He just yeah. killed this last postseason. Nah, he was sure. young. He was. He I was hated good. playing him. <laughs> They used to do this little flare, this little wheel. You know, we do it at Pike. Yeah. I took y'all playing my high school team. Yeah, that's our that's our that's our offense. I used to I used to hate guarding so much. I was like, it's no way you can't use it. It's terrible. Y'all doing all these flares. And when you was guarding him, and especially when CJ started playing, yeah. well, it was it was super effective with Wes and Batum. Yeah. But when CJ started playing, y'all had the hand doing stuff with yeah. it. I'm like, oh, they getting filthy out here now. Yeah, we was using it to yeah. run the pick and roll, <laughs> yeah. not to run it off that. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, they getting filthy now. So yeah. that offense was crazy. But playing them, you knew you was about to get – you played in Portland, you was getting beat. We knew yeah. from the East Coast Damn. team, we was like, yeah, we're going to yeah. take a hell in Portland. It's cool, though. It's hard to win there, especially when you swear. travel to us. That crowd That's crazy. Tough. Yeah, they be like that. Her job in Sacramento got one of the two of the toughest crowds in the NBA. Nah, for Shaq sure. didn't used to be like that. That just got like that over the last couple years. That's it like was like that with Bibby and them yeah. way and back. Then it died and then down. it died down oh, for a God. while. And then the last, I say, two, three years, it got crazy again. Yeah. yeah. Just speaking of that, I got to ask, what's the most hostile game you've been in, like, as far as, like, environment, like, location-wise? Um, man, I say, because uh, you done been in some battles. I say either at Golden State or Sheesh. at OKC. Mm. Like when they was nice, nice, like at OKC. Um, but Golden State just tough because like playing them in the playoffs, you like, we played them I think my fifth year or maybe it was my fourth year. It was my fourth year. We played them in the second round. We beat the Clippers. We played uh, Golden State and we was up double digits every game. And I'm like, man, we like we lost four to one, but we could have beat them four to one. Mm -hmm. But we'd be up nine, and it'll be five minutes left in the third quarter. We go into the fourth quarter, down eight. 
And it's like, it happened fast too. It's like, they hit one three, you hear the crowd, you see everybody stand up and somebody taking the ball out and you just looking around like, damn, it feel like we down 20. Damn. They come back, hit another one. It's like, you can just see the game just, that, that's the only crowd I played against at Oracle or like, we could be winning and it felt like the game was like slipping away. Damn. Like, that's how crazy it was in there. Like, Steph hit a three, Clay hit a three, like timeout, like that walk back to the bench was like. <laughs> Devastating. <laughs> Damn. Like, Devastating. You think that's your toughest matchup 20. though? Golden State? It's with Steph, you and Steph one on one. Uh, I mean, Steph, he just, he just constantly moving. Like, yeah. You just can't lose track of Steph. Like he, he definitely one of the toughest. I think just one on one, I say like, Kyrie a tough mm -hmm. matchup, bro. For sure. Kyrie just a tough, because you can guard him perfect. And he'll still make it. Yeah. Either hand, bumping him like fat, like it, like he just and he oh. he'll do it when it don't look like it's hard too. Yeah. When somebody do it and they feel like they just did it smooth and it's all net too, be like, damn, like uh, that can turn into him making every shot. Nah, for sure. Crazy. He spoke on Kyrie early, rookie Very year. Early. At one point in my career, I guarded Kyrie more than anybody in the NBA. Yeah, y'all played a lot. I get killed every time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, That's a real that. stat. <laughs> nah, it was, bro. That's a dude, when I was in Milwaukee by yeah. last year, they was like, hey, when we was playing Brooklyn, they was like, you can guard him. You guard him the most than anybody in his career. I was like, motherfucker. Put that better in this bag. We got swept every year. <laughs> like, don't guess. They were trying to get you to believe. Yeah, I, they were trying to so I was like, nah, I was already done. I, was like, I don't believe that shit. Drew gonna stay on him. Don't worry about he that. He got hurt, huh? Did he get hurt? Who, uh, Kyrie? Y'all played Brooklyn? Yeah, yeah, he twisted his ankle. But I wasn't getting in anyway. But <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you had battles for sure. Anyway. But my favorite battle between you and the guards, I used to watch all y'all games, but you and Westbrook got together. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, this this must see TV. Yeah, because y'all y'all both tough minded guards. Y'all both gonna talk. Y'all both pop y'all shit. You don't really talk. Like if somebody say something to you, then you'll go back. Yeah. But him, he don't give a fuck. He, he started. He started every time. I remember <laughs> one time start. he did that to me. I was like, bro, I don't care. Yeah. And he was like, that's the problem. <laughs> I was like, that's, 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 that's a good one. All right. I was like, that's the problem. Made you like, think again. Yeah, I was like, like damn, that, that is right. a problem. <laughs> I'm about to trip you. Nah. <laughs> 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 nah, but what's those battles like? I mean, those, honestly, them was the most fun, like with sure. Russ, because it was like my first five, six years, like he was the bully. Mm-hmm. Like, I, they was on TV all the time. And Russ, they, it didn't matter if it was, like, a, a big matchup. If somebody was hurt and he was playing against the backup, he didn't care. He, he tried, tried to, to do it to shit. everybody. And I just remember when, uh, when I was, like, rookie second year, it was like he used to try to give me 50 every time. Like, it was like. He would be shooting on me so much that like KD would be getting mad, like pass the ball, like he's shooting every time. And once I realized that it was like that, yeah. that's when I started taking it personal. I'm like this, like I know he always on go against everybody, but he really trying to like come get me. Mm -hmm. And that was like when it, it became personal. So I, I start going back and then I start having the ball more. Once like, you know, we did our rebuild, yeah. I start having it more. And you know, he he noticed that I was having it more. So I was being more aggressive back at him. And then that's when it'd turn into like talking, you know, he I've been busting your ass for years. Yeah. And I'd be like, Yeah, well, like it's a it's a new time. Yeah. Like so when we started having that conversation, it it just turned into every game, it was automatic. Like I came to the arena knowing like Must it's on tonight. Yeah. Like something happening. Damn, I thought y'all had real, like, beef for real because it just seemed so tense to know it just coming from him just on BS, just trying to get <laughs> nah, it off nah, on you. he just played like that. Yeah, yeah, but I'm he just played like that. He like a cool dude. Russ is cool. Yeah, yeah. Like, sure. Off the court, we cool. <laughs> like, But on the court, I, it was just like he took that approach and, like, ain't nobody punking me. I don't care 
who you is. Did that help turn you up though? It did for sure. Yeah. yeah. Damn. You ain't see the playoffs? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he yeah, I was just asking. He got it back in blood for sure. <laughs> for sure. Because Pat Bev said he was the bully of the NBA, so I didn't know. Oh, here you go. <laughs> oh, man. He always just <laughs> <it's crazy. laughs> It's always <laughs> him, bro. Stop, bro. My man, continue. You oh, guys. my <laughs> God, bro. My fault, gang. I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, man. oh shit. I'm weak. <laughs> you fry, man. It's so rolling. Man, I got to ask. I've always wanted to ask you this question. What's your favorite game winner between the one in Portland, you know what I'm saying, coming off the curl, knocking it down, or the bad shot, quote unquote? The, the bad shot one. That's that's my favorite one for sure. I, I know that was a personal accomplishment for you, obviously winning the series, but do you know what you did to the internet with that shot, bro? You fucked everything up with that shot. That was probably yeah, one of the hardest edits. The father stretched my hands to that shot was one of the hardest basketball edits of all time, bro. Yeah, that 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 was a moment for sure. Yeah, and you and you definitely When just, it happened, I ain't even think about it like that until you know, after the game, you do media, yeah. all the shower, you do all that stuff, and then like you finally get to your phone, like I look at my phone right after, but then when you go into that whole post game process, it's like a little minute in the playoffs for you get to your phone. Mm -hmm. And I just remember after that, I was in a sprinter, I was on my way back home and I was just sitting there on my phone and I was like, it was so much shit that happened that I ain't even remember it happening. Like I looked up into the camera, I ain't even yeah, that remember that crazy. moment. <laughs> crazy picture. <laughs> crazy crazy yeah, picture. Was, crazy. Yeah, it was just, that whole shit was, it was a blur until I saw it. I was like, damn. You remember was, waving though? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I already know, but I was like. I remember that. Like, <laughs> I remember you waved. I don't know if it was your brother or something. That was my brother. Oh, he yeah, was sitting right there. Yeah, he came. I said, oh, they turned. <laughs> I said, ooh. But that's how you know when it be personal. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you got a brother. So yeah. you know when like, just like I know like what type of. When I come into the game, I'm playing against Russ or whatever. Yeah. Like, you see Russ' brother sitting courtside, sure. too. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody who got a brother, you know. Like, when you go home or when you step away, your brother is the one that's in your head. Like, man, that nigga, he got you, he got yeah. you fucked up. No mm -hmm. ever. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's that type of conversation. So, it's that type of investment. So, when it happened like that, he was like, shit, he made the shot. Yeah, oh God. <laughs> that's what it's that. like. That you knew fun. you was going to take that shot, though? Keep I it knew. Pain, bro. I knew after about... Like when the clock got, like I remember I was about to call for a switch to get PG off me. Like gotcha. I was calling for another defender. But then he was a little bit like back a little bit. So I kind of waved him off. Like, And right when I waved him off, I was like, I'm shooting this shit right here. Damn. Bro, you know how far you was? Bro, that's what I'm saying, bro. You shot that bitch from yonder, bro. What's crazy is my trainer, Phil, the one that's running the camp, mm -hmm. he came to OKC like after a... Uh, I think it was like after game three, he came to OKC. We was in the arena shooting. And that whole series, we was shooting that night and I was just shooting a bunch of deep threes. And he was like, you gonna, like, you gotta make these. Like, you, yeah. gonna, you gonna keep making these. And the whole series, I was just hitting deep three after deep three. So when it got to that end of the game, like I just remember like CJ was like to my right and I could just see his arm like telling me like, go. Like, yeah. it's time to go. But I already knew in my head like, he stay right there, like I'm shooting this shit right here. Uh, you go to for that, hundred yeah. percent. And it was a tie game, so I'm like, if I miss, we going, we going to overtime. It, yeah. yeah, fuck it. Yeah, that's crazy. And that shot got brought up again because we was watching stuff in the Olympics. And that shot that he hit in that gold medal game was just like that was crazy. That's just some different shit. Like y'all just get it like that. And a lot of people talk about obviously we know stuff to go like you, bro, one of the best shooters of all time that don't get enough credit on that because you really go crazy. Like we we was looking at the highlights, but you have talk plenty. About it. They don't talk about enough, bro. Nah, it's, he number two. Hey, with him and Clay, he battle for number two. Because I don't feel talk like about I it, feel man. like you can shoot off the dribble better though. Yeah. I mean, Clay, I ain't gonna lie, because he took Clay. 60 on us. And oh, Clay shoots that ball. I got yeah. a different view. Like, <laughs> Clay I got niggas PTSD. But, yeah, I got PTSD <laughs> from Clay. Uh, but the way you can shoot off the dribble, though, yeah, right, I put yeah. that in, like, you and Steph in a different realm yeah, with that's that shit. hard to do. It's a harder yeah. shot. They more contested. Yeah. People guarding you harder. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's different, bro. Hell yeah, bro. Shit, they, definitely don't they definitely don't talk about it. They act like I don't be doing what I've been doing. Like, this will be my 13th season. You've been going crazy for a long, a long time. time still right? Nah, you've been cold. Oh, crazy. It's been a long shit. time, bro. <laughs> nah, that's what we want nah, you to hear. Go crazy. Because I already, well, I told it's you It's been before. a long time, bro. For real. Like, I'm just saying, it's like, 
my time in the league, when you when I think about like how many people have been very good like over that time and then it's been more people very good and more people very good for a couple yeah. years like it ain't been that many people that been here the whole time like since I've been in the league that just been doing it like over yeah, and over well. and over but I think people just get bored with consistency mm -hmm. and I ain't loud but like shit I've been doing it that long and winning like it ain't yeah. like I've been doing it and I'm, I'm playing for a team that just never <clears throat> played in the playoffs like yeah Portland. The season before last, bro, I averaged 30, almost 33 a game, bro. Oh, no, I know. Uh, yeah. Like, it's hard to average I, a dub in the league for a decade, bro. It's crazy. I've been over yeah. 25 for damn near eight, nine years. With bro. another, I'm going to stop cussing, but another person <laughs> averaging a dub. Yeah, yeah you know yeah. how I get that. We, I'm we say, no, on, bro. That motherfucker CJ McCollum. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did his shit too, but I'm saying that goes to but you. I'm like, like, I, But I always told CJ, like, I could think of games where CJ come out hot. If he got 18 in the first quarter, I ain't trying to get my 22. Like, CJ, I remember one game, he was playing against Chicago. He had 50 in three quarters, I think. I just didn't shoot. It's crazy, I just kept bro. giving it to him. Like, because I'm, I want to see everybody do their thing. Like, nah, bro, yeah, bro. If I'm going to have a lot of moments, I want to make sure that, shit, when it's somebody else's moment, I'm going to let them have their moment. Cause I want I want niggas to be happy for me when I have mine, so mm -hmm. I ain't go try to be hogging the, the moment all the time. Yeah. So it seemed like the media tried to break y'all up for a long time, bro. Try to yeah, separate y'all, saying y'all was too small. Like so, that goes to show what type of person you are for sure to let him rock out like that. Man, and for sure, did. even to see like how you embrace Ace Simon is like nah, bro. Like I, I'll show you how to get to it. Yeah. And you can see the direct reflection yeah. of that. Like obviously, you can tell, bro. In that locker room, your presence is felt, bro. You yeah. show love, and that's like even with you, like you said, when you got no starting position. All right, I'm straight. I'm going to make sure my backup, he going to get his bread, too. Yeah, that was my goal. But, like, what he does is not normal. Like Especially as a franchise. You're showing bro. people love that essentially is supposed to take your spot. Yeah. And that's not what you, When I was coming in the league, like, people weren't really doing that. Like, mm -hmm. nobody was doing a camp where they invite guys to come work out with them to show what you do to help them get better because yeah, they want bro. your spot. Yeah. I mean, I know, bro, like, to me, I'm looking at the game and how like these dudes coming in behaving. And I'm looking at a lot of weird behavior, like how they handle success, like the shit that they doing and what they saying and how they act when they have some success. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, that ain't, that shit is not gonna last. Yeah. And then when they stop working and it don't work and then they down bad and they broken up about it, ain't nobody gonna come save you. Ain't nobody gonna care. So I'm just trying to, I'm trying to touch them and reach out and give them everything that I know, because I know it's gonna give them a chance to sustain it. Nah, yeah. So like Ant, all of them dudes that's behind me, like I'm gonna give them everything because I'm not in competition with them. Like I know I'm gonna win, I already been winning and it ain't because I've been hating on somebody or right. mm -hmm. holding out. That's actually why I keep winning because I'm not hating and I'm sharing it. And I'm 100%. putting the next player, young player, whatever in position to do what they gonna do because I'm, What's for me is for me. Like I'ma be me all the time. And it ain't it ain't gonna stop. Nah, that's for real. Everybody ain't like that, bro. Yeah. I remember my guy E. T. used to always tell me that about you, man. He used to be like, damn the realist, bro. He want everybody to win and that's a fact. Like just even seeing that with my own eyes today, I'm looking at all the young guys you're working with. I'm like, man, if I could have had something like this when yeah. I was a rookie, cause they asked me, we were sitting up there watching, it's like, did you do this when you was a rookie? I'm like, I'm like, no. What? Nobody taking me under their wing to show me how to get better. They thought I was going to come to take their spot. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's, I mean, the thing about like the camp, bro, is we got like speakers, like mental, like stuff that is going to help them with stuff that ain't got nothing to do with basketball. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. they all going to have agents, especially now. They got agents, they got managers, they got family members. You got all these people that's pulling them in all these different directions. And then when it don't work out, ain't nobody gonna be there. Like, yeah. yeah, And ain't none of them been in position to really give them no sound advice that's gonna actually help. They just think he about to make some money. They think he better than everybody when they don't really know what's really going on. Yeah. Like they don't really know who in this league, who they competition is, how the coaches look at them. They just think this my family member, he the one. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we trying to share as much as we can with them on the court, but off the court too, so they don't come in here thinking that something is not. Mm -hmm. 
And they've been, you know, their whole life, they've been working to be an NBA player. And then they out the league in one year and don't know what to do. Now they just somewhere, you know, doing anything. Yeah. They ain't playing basketball no more. So that's really what our focus is. Cause a lot of these dudes, you know, it's two way players, second round picks, mm -hmm. first round picks. Some dudes on the, you know, they on the cusp, like that third year, you know, you get your option picked up, you guaranteed that third year. But after that, you might be overseas. Might get spooky. Yeah, they don't care what pick you was no more. Now they looking at you like, he wasn't what we thought he was. Yeah. Yeah. Another 19 year old that like, they looking at like they used to look at you. So you, should, you can go. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, we trying to stop that from happening, but they it's a lot that they got to understand on the court, but also like what goes into it off the court too. You know what I'm saying? Like them drills we did today, them wasn't Euro steps and a bunch of side step is like, bro, these are conceptual drills you have to be able to do in the NBA. Like, yeah. the X is on the court mm -hmm. for a reason. Brian going to zip the ball to that X right there. If you're not there, it's going to go out of bounds. You're coming out. He going to put his hands in the air and look at the coach, and you're so, coming out. For sure. So it's like, this the type of stuff they got to know or you can't make it, especially for some of the positions that they in. Like, mm -hmm. y'all not the number one pick of the draft, so. Nah, that's dope. Yeah. For sure. I got to ask, man, <clears throat> with your first year being out of Portland, how was that transition coming into a new team, a new city, and getting adjusted to playing uh, with another great player like Giannis? It was, uh, like, I was excited about it, like, going into it, just opportunity to, like, really win. Like, every year I always thought, like, if you're a competitor, you like this, like, we can do it this year. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, you talking to the team, everybody excited it's a new year. But this was the first time where I went into it, like, we can win for real, like, mm -hmm. and it was kind of it was kind of fucked up because I had a, you know, a bunch of family stuff going on, going into like that summer, mm -hmm. going through a, a divorce and uh, knowing I'm gonna get traded, but not knowing where I'm gonna get traded to, so I couldn't get hurt. Got to be able to pass a physical, so I wasn't able to get up and down at all. Like I didn't play pick up or nothing the whole summer. Damn. Like my first day getting up and down was the first day of training camp. That's tough. And I did, uh, I got traded like two, three days before camp. So I got to Milwaukee. I did my physicals. Moved my stuff into the apartment I was in for a little bit. The next day I went to go shoot. Shit, the next day was media day. Damn. And the next day was practice. And I remember like going up and down at practice and, um, we got to stop. Giannis got the rebound. And I'm like running up the sideline. And he threw it ahead to me. And I jumped up and caught the ball. And I landed like, if this the out of bounds line, I was this far out of bounds. Like, I caught the ball. I'm way out of bounds. I'm like, oh, I'm off. Like, I ain't mm -hmm. I ain't on point. Like, I ain't ever did that shit before. I'm I, like completely out of bounds. So we keep playing. And just because I'm a scorer, like, I hit a couple threes. Like, I got to the rim a few times, but I could just feel, like, my body didn't feel good. I'm like, I'm thinking, like, I just had to pick my life up in two days and just go and, like, play. You know what I'm saying? Like, ain't nothing, ain't nothing really settled. So, like, I pretty much spent the whole year trying to, like, just get my mind to, like, be there and to lock in and be sharp because um, I knew what type of opportunity I had. You know what I'm saying? But... It was a it was a harder transition than I thought for real. Like just like I said, because of my life, but then also like adjusting to playing with another great player, and then also playing with Chris. Like shit, Chris mm -hmm. is a is a great player too. Yeah. Sure. yeah, but he plays a certain way too. So I'm having to get used to playing with two players, um, and I don't want to stop them from doing what they do, but I got to find how to be the best version of me within this too. So it was just a lot of, it was a lot of moving parts. So it was, it was more difficult than I thought it would, would be. All right, well, Dame, I'm gonna need you to get that shit together. Yeah, <laughs> no, nah, I trust Play you. over there at the Pacers. Yeah. The Pacers fan, he think they got smoke for y'all, bro. We did last year. We didn't go talk I mean, about last, last year. Last year, last year they, uh, like. Who gazy ass shit, bro. <laughs> last year they, was uh, hurt, yeah, bro. <laughs> y'all was hurt. Last year, it just was, you know, they, um, I think the first time we played them, I don't think I played. I think if we played them in, in Indy, I don't think I played in that game. And I think the next time we played them was in the the end season tournament. Mm -hmm. And then they beat us in that game. And uh, 
And that was when Halliburton was like, you know, it's my time, whatever. Yeah. Smoke. So, <laughs> like, when I seen that, I respected it. That's why I said after the game. No, nah, like, yeah, I, you showed love. Yeah. I respect it. Yeah. Like, that's like if, you know, like how Russ used to do this, and sometimes people used to do it back. Like, yeah. He had to take it because I didn't did it to so many people. So, I respected it, but, like, at the same time, you, like, we're going to address that. At, I respect it, but we're going we gonna to get back to that at yes, some sir. point. Yes, sir. Yeah. So then, like, the next time we played them, I think uh, we beat them in Milwaukee. And then um, I think, you know, they beat us, I think, four times. Yeah. We beat them that one time. But that, the time that we beat them was when the situation with the ball. and mm -hmm. yeah. was had, like, 50 yeah, Giannis had 60, yeah, 60. 64 or something like that. Jesus Christ. So like <laughs> Yeah, he got yeah, he got that look back. Yeah, but he was just just dunging in every play. Like they he there's nothing they could do that night. Uh, so that happened. And then, you know, the the season went by. So like we lose the last game of the season. And I'm looking at the schedule. I'm like, we about to play Indiana in the playoffs. And that was when I was looking at it. I was like, I ain't. It been like a little back and forth year. It been a lot, you know, I'm trying to figure this out, figure that out. Mm -hmm. But I was like, now we about to we about to see in this mm. like in this playoff. So I mean it's it's kind of fucked up. We was banged up a little bro, bit. Was that, hurt, was hurt, bro. that was hurt, bro. That was hurt. No, but I felt like we still was gonna win. I respect. I felt like we still was gonna win. <laughs> uh, but I mean Chris Milson believed it banking threes going to overtime and shit. Uh, he should yeah. damn sure believe. Yeah, he. I mean, I still felt like we was going to win, but, I mean, they – sometimes teams have a run, and they had a run. They ended up getting to the conference finals, and we they beat us in six games. I mean, I, I still felt like we we had action. You know what I'm saying? I strained my Achilles again in uh in game three, mm -hmm. too, so. Man, I mean, get well soon, man. Like I said, yeah, y'all was hurt, to be fair, as a Patriots They was hurt. I'm still I mean, but you get out there, you get beat, you get beat. You know what I'm saying? I respect that. Hey, ass nigga. <laughs> What's nah, the energy? His, his energy low. Like, he ain't marking that pace of shit now. Talk your shit, King. <laughs> I, I, we good money. No, we had a great season. No, I seen y'all, I seen y'all, uh, because I be watching. So I seen the episode oh, yeah. where y'all was like, you know, the Pacers, whatever. I'm like, nah, I ain't say that. I remember you was like, <laughs> nah, I played for the there. Bucks. I remember you was talking about that. nigga Wallow over there. there. He, yeah, hey, whatever team. I want to chip in Milwaukee. Feel the deer. He with everybody. You got to see the Boston deer. We got a Boston hat in the set now. I do got a Boston hat. Shout out to my dogs, man, over there. That's funny. Nah, I hope y'all have a hell of a year this year, though. They are. For sure. Nah, and the East is going to be crazy this year. We just got to be healthy. Yeah, honestly, sure. that's what's gonna come down. I want to ask you, what's it like playing with Giannis? I had a chance to play with Giannis as a point guard. I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna keep it a bean. It's me. I love Giannis. He's a good dude, super cool. <laughs> but as a point guard, nah, hell, nah. I'm cool. I'm gonna keep it real, bro. I'm cool. No, nah, I'm cold. He cold. I'm cool. I'm keep it real. Like fish. <laughs> boy, nah, T, this the get thing. To that like, corner, uh, my boy. <laughs> nah, this the the. I mean, the thing about playing with Giannis is like when you've been great. And you've won yeah. playing a certain way. For sure. You like you, you gotta respect that. That's that's how you play. That's that's how you know. And then you put me into it. I'm used to having the ball too. Mm -hmm. But I came into the situation like you know, like I gotta be a great compliment to Giannis. So I knew it wasn't gonna be what it was in Portland. Mm -hmm. But I just think it was a it was just an adjustment for him. You know what I'm saying? Like it's different when you got some different type of help you know what yeah, i'm saying like yeah, it don't take yeah. as much you don't have to give as much you know what i'm saying like we can do it a little different and i think it the best part about it is like we have a conversation about it yeah that's dope it ain't like he was just like i'm not changing yeah. he was just like damn sometimes like you got to just tell me like pass the fucking ball yeah like oh, you got to tell like me because like all i all i know is go like mm -hmm. i'm gonna go like but don't, like, he'll tell you, like, tell me. And he... That's all I had to say. <laughs> and he mean it, though. <laughs> like, he... I give him credit because he, cause he mean it. You nah, know what I'm saying? Like, that's really how he how he think. Like, when I got there, I'm watching him work out. He working out against four people. And Not they four. all fouling. Like, <laughs> he like, no, like, you got to foul me harder than that. You know, like... Damn. So that's how he... That's how he. That's just how his mind is. The one so thing I different. do love about Giannis, though, he do listen. 
Yeah. Like he'll listen to anything you say. Like he'll take it in. I don't know if he was listening to me, but he was he was considering it. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, look, I'm fast too. If you give it to me on a break, I can get to the rim. He look, he's like, okay, <laughs> push your own stick to one dribble, your own stick. All right, fuck it, I'm gonna get out the way, brother. Yeah, he. It's just an adjustment, bro. I think that was the biggest thing. And like as the season went on, we talked about it more and more. The more that we got to know each other, it was yeah. like I felt more and more comfortable telling him like. If you if my man is is sitting right there in that gap and you can't get in there, just swing it to me. Catch. After I hit a couple, like he gonna get a little closer to me and you gonna have more space. Like we started to have more and more conversations like that. But I also would tell him like it's also gonna let me know like when the ball is coming. Mm -hmm. Cause he get in the paint so easy, you know, he'll get into the paint and sometimes he'll just dunk on two people. Yeah. And then sometimes, you know, a third person will come. And, you know, just jump before he jump and then he'll throw it. And I'm thinking he about to shoot. So it was just like as the season went on, we talked more and more. Mm -hmm. And like we definitely had our stretches where it was like that was it right there. Like yeah, I yeah. remember we went to L.A. We played the Lakers and I had like 35 and 11 and he had 35 and 12 and eight. That's and good. then we played That's the crazy. Clippers and I had like 34 and 10 and six. And he had 37, 12 and, and nine. And it was like those back-to-back -back games. I remember like walking through the tunnel, and we were just looking at each other like, "This how we got to. This how we got to do it." Like yeah. it ain't gonna always look like this numbers-wise, but like when we on point, on point, it could look like this. But we got to use each other. And in both of those games down the stretch, we playing two-man games. I'm, a, I'm, I'm coming off, hit him in the pocket. He don't have nothing. He come back to me. I'm shooting threes off the handoff. I come off the handoff. Get to the paint. His man come to me, I'm dumping it off, dunk. It was just like, we was just, we was clicking. You know what I'm saying? But I think when you having injuries, you know, I miss a game here, then he miss a game. Yeah. And then Chris miss a stretch of games. Like, we was never able to just fully, like, click all at the same time. You know, then I think they both missed a stretch of games and we playing the Clippers and then Bobby have 28 and 15. I have 40 My and God. we beat the Clippers BP. with everybody. Yeah. And then we beat Phoenix with everybody. Like it, we just, it was just a little, it was a funky year, bro. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why I had y'all winning the chip. We talked yeah. about it. I, you know, but all them things combined injuries yeah. and all that yeah, stuff. It's so, hard. You got to yeah. be healthy, bro. I had y'all winning the chip, but I got y'all winning. Hold on, let me check. Uh oh, it's gonna be. I mean, let gonna me be, be real. I mean, do I got y'all winning the, the chip? East this year? <laughs> the East is crazy this year too. The East, the East is top fire. heavy, hundred percent. JT, he mad right now. He ain't getting no tick. It, it might be. A, it, it's gonna be an it's, interesting year, bro. <laughs> it's gonna be tough, but it's. I think. I mean, you know, from being in the league a long time, bro, it's a lot of shit that happened over the course of NBA season. A lot. Yeah. But I, a lot I, I fear the deer, man. I want to chill with the fear deer. The deer, man. man. They don't fuck with me no more, but I, I still rock with them. I'm about to say, I ain't see you in the building at all this year, man. They be inviting people back. They would have booed me, bro. <laughs> there would be no 520 live show in Milwaukee. We, we got we to get Damn, you don't want President Becker yeah, after I'm man. going to a game this year. Well, who y'all play open tonight? We, I think we at Philly. Oh, that's tough. We probably going to make that, that trip. Like, I, I, I need to pull up to that. Yeah, I think we at Philly. I want to hop into the the rap shit though, bro. When did you pick up the pen? When did you start? Like, did you start out freestyling with the guys on the AU trips, and then yeah, it turned that's, into that's how I started for real. Yeah, so like my AU coach when we was in like sixth grade, um, like we used to, you know, we'd do the local tournaments. We'd go to Sacramento. We might go to Vegas. We'd go to LA. But we used to all we used to have four people to a room. Like for our tournament, so it was t like two beds. We literally was back to back in the bed, back to back in this bed, four of us in one room. Damn. But at some point, he'd have us all in one room, and we all just kind of be circled up in there. And he had talked to us like, "Hey, you know, I'm gonna talk to y'all like men." Like you could tell, he was trying to mold us to be like certain type. He'd tell us like, you know, what I'm saying, y'all from Oakland. Yeah. Like we ain't scared. We don't care. You know, what they name is, who they are, what type of gear they got. They was trying to mold us like that, you know. And um, they started doing this thing where, like, he would start rapping. And then we pretty much had to pass it around to everybody. And uh, everybody okay. had to rap. <clears throat> okay. Like, we had a couple white dudes on our team. Like, they had to rap. Yeah, I made them get in the booth. Damn. We sit in a circle like this. Damn. And we just pass it around. That's hard. And everybody had to rap. And I just remember, like... 
when I rap sometimes, like, they'd be like, oh, like, that was hard, you know? Like, and I felt like every time I spit, I had to keep coming with something clever. Like, I, mm. and then, like, all my cousins I grew up around was doing music. They was all rapping. And then, um, shit, by the time we got to high school, you know, you come out the warm-ups, we was coming out to our own music. Oh, that's We'd hard. go record. Damn, that's fire. Let them play the music. We doing layup lines. We was playing our own music. College, we started doing mixtapes, and then shit, that was... Was you a West Coast rapper at first? Was you uh, E-40? Tell me where to go. <laughs> 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 I just said dress or shake him. Hey. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm weak. <laughs> weak. <laughs> now, who, who was your inspiration? I was more, I was, I, I, obviously, being from the West Coast, I like West Coast music, yeah. but... My style of music was always more like East Coast. Gotcha. Because I like bars. I like people that could like rap for real. Yeah. And that was never the style on the West Coast like that. It was more bounce, you know, like dance. Right. Mm -hmm. Steez, yeah. Um, you know, it was more like that. Um, but I always preferred my style because I'm, I like, you know, lyricism and writing and bars and double entendres and stuff like that. So I wrote like, I'd write music like the kind of music that I listen to. And then I try to find like that balance of like what's player and what sound good yeah. and ain't boring and preachy. And that's kind of like the lane that I do my music in. When did you know you was nice though? Like, all right, I can really do this. I can start putting the LP out of album. Uh, I can start I started, asking Wayne J to for a feature. Like I did, uh, I think it was like probably like 2015. I start putting stuff out on SoundCloud and, um, no, it was before that. I did. What was that? What was that? All Star twenty fifteen. Yeah, it was. It was twenty fifteen All Star in New York. Okay, I was at that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That one. That's what you yeah. made. That's all yeah, he I was in that one. Yeah. Uh, he was in that one. Yeah. <laughs> so All Star twenty fifteen in New York. I did Sway in the morning because Sway from Oakland. So he was like, you know, you do your media stuff out there. He was like, come on the show. Yeah. yeah. So when I walked in, he was like, man, like I don't want to put you on the spot, but I know you be rapping like. You want to spit something? I was like, yeah. So, like, I rapped on Sway, like, during All-Star. And, like, the that's video, hard, like, that's my most viewed rap video on the internet. Like, Okay. So, like, after that, I, that's when it, everybody was like, you got to start putting music out. Like, this shit fire. Like, it mm -hmm. went viral. Yeah. Nah, I remember that shit. And then after that, I started putting shit out on SoundCloud. And I was doing a bunch of SoundCloud stuff. And then people was like, you got to drop an album. And I remember, like, my 26th birthday, that was probably the following year. Um, for my birthday, I did my first show. But I performed all SoundCloud songs. Where are you performing at? In Portland. Oh. I sold out I sold out a show in Portland on my birthday. Damn, so, like, dang. After I did that, and then I started working on the album after that. Damn. And then, like, all my partners, Adidas, uh at JBL at the time, like, they started wanting to use my music for, like, all my stuff. So that's really how it started. Oh, that's yeah. hard, bro. So I needed to own my music. I needed to own, like, my publishing and the masters and all that to be able to use it for, like, commercials and all of that stuff so that I could make money from it. And then from there, it just yeah. took off. Yeah, I heard you say you had one of uh, somebody working with you, your agent or something. Like, you had him really yeah. tap into the music industry. So he actually game. worked for my agency. He's, like, up. one of my agents. But like they, he always get on me because my very first game of my career, like at a regular season, was against the Lakers too. So we played them on Halloween, and uh, we we actually beat them. And I had twenty three and eleven. And I remember walking out the locker room the night before. Me and my cousins was just upstairs, like freestyling, writing bars. Yeah. And um, I came out the locker room, and they was like, "Man, that was a great game. Like you just played against Kobe. You just had twenty three and eleven. Only Allen Iverson, so they telling me all these stats and shit, like, and I remember I was just, I let them finish, and I was like, bro, I really can rap, like, because yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about what I was writing in my notes, I'm like, bro, I really can rap, and they all looked like, man, not another fucking basketball player <laughs> thinking, like, they can rap, because they hadn't heard me rap, so then he started, I started sending them stuff to his phone, like, after I record, I send it. So he really was like just, you know, an agent working for my agency, doing basketball stuff. And now he basically is like, he know everything about me. He ain't my A&R, but he do all the business side of everything oh, with man, my music. 
because he didn't learn no, like he didn't learn everything. Yeah, so, that's raw, bro. Yeah, I remember yeah. the four bar Fridays going crazy. Yeah, I started four bar Friday. So, what's that energy like having a sold out crowd listen to you? You know, rap like you get it in the NBA. You can playing in front of thousands of people. Then you go, you up on stage. It's mm-hmm. you. What's no, that? it's different. It's definitely different. Like my first couple of times, I'm like, man, I wonder if they even gonna like fuck with the music yeah. like that. And um, like when I got up there and I did the the first show for my birthday, I was doing a. Uh, this freestyle, and I think I posted a clip of it at the time on my Instagram. But I was rapping, and I was like, rap, like one of my bars, I was like, last time they count me out, what I do, game six. I said, last time they count me out, what I do, game six. Talking about when I hit the three on the Rockets. And I said it in a, uh, at the show, I said, last time they count me out, what I do. And the whole crowd said, game six. Right, so and it was a team up. and there was a <laughs> clip of it, and I was like, "Oh, they fuck with my shit." Like, I'm, I'm really nice. Like, uh, I'm wild, after man, that, man. yeah, yeah. I'll after that, that's when on. I was like, this, "All right, bro, you about to crash out? I'm crash out? <laughs> you put the jump off stage? Yeah, I'm crashing out." <laughs> who been your favorite collab so far? It's a two parter, and then like, who you look forward to work in the future with? Uh, my favorite so far, mm. that Wayne and Jay. You got a Wayne verse. That's action. crazy. Oh, um, I gotta say Wayne Cause like The first time I got with Wayne It was actually Somebody reached out to me for Wayne Cause they was like You know he wanna do something with you Yeah Cause he You know he like how you don't try to rap like a rapper He can tell you just rapping like you So we connected like that And shit Me and Wayne got so many songs together That ain't Ain't Not even been real? released Like cause everything I send him He do it and just send it right back Like he just he do that shit fast. So I, it's a bunch of shit that we haven't, that I haven't even put out. But i say that one because I actually been to the studio with him. Yeah. And like being able to see it, I was like, damn. Like, Nigga, you know how crazy that is, bro? Yeah, he, he said it's so all light. Like, I know, bro. I grew up on Lil Wayne, bro. Like, shit, me too. Up, like, <laughs> all that. Like, bro, Wayne, bro. Nah, it was crazy because when I, he was like, I was in LA. He was like, yeah, pull up, come to the studio. That's crazy. And I remember I was like, all right. And then I was on my way there and I was thinking like, damn, like I'm finna pull up on Wayne at the studio. I'm thinking he finna have 50 people there. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be a whole situation. I got there, it was him and the engineer. That was it. That's crazy. Damn. And he probably rapped through 35 different beats just like play the beat. He's standing up at the mic. He a rap, rap, rap. They bring it back. He rap over some more. He wasn't writing it or nothing. He just was kind of like rapping over each track, just kind of punching in. Yeah. And then he played some shit for me that you know hadn't been released. I was like, bro, this dude really is. Like, how you even think about half of this shit you saying? Like, it was crazy. It was a crazy experience, bro. And for him to still be doing that to this day is still crazy. Like, like he, he coming just, crazier. Like right yeah, now, he's he, like he keep going. Yeah, he in his bag right now. What's that girl that who for LSU? Uh, Flaugh, 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 yeah, man, that she verse nice. he gave her is he cool. gave her a real verse, yeah. Bro, yeah. fire verse, crazy. And it, and it, like as an athlete too, like people will get give you a throwaway too. They yeah. just do something like here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like where they won't do it. So he gave her a real verse, and he always gave me a real verse. Like yeah. He ain't never gave me no. Little, you know, bullshit. Yeah. Who's somebody you look forward to, though, or you want to, that you ain't collab with yet? Man. You got something with Cole? Man, I've been knowing Cole a long time. I've been on his ass for the... I've been on uh, his ass about to hit a serve. My God. I've been on his ass about like the song. Me, that's how I was the interview. Like, bro, we got to get Dave, bro. We got to get Dave. Damn, nah, but I feel Cole. bad. That's why I kept hitting you like, bro, I'm, too, I'm trying to work it out, bro. I, I feel bad, bro. We nah. could supposed to do this shit months ago. Nah, nah, we appreciate you, bro. But uh, I've been trying to get one with Cole for a minute, but I actually know him. Like, yeah. like he hit me... Uh, he randomly hit me one time, and I'm thinking like, okay, he. I see his name pop. I'm like, oh, he finally finished. He probably sent something through. I opened the message up, and he hit me about like our roster to see like if we got a roster spot about somebody he know trying to get back in the league. Oh, <laughs> he playing GM. <laughs> he was playing GM on me. I'm like, oh my god, bro. I thought the track was coming through. Like, I'm finna send it right back. But uh, yeah, I say Cole. That's my that's my boy, man. Um, okay. But shit, Drake. It's I mean, it's it's a crazy few names to say, but I say shit, wrong Cole, Drake, and Kendrick. 
hundred percent. Like them three, I, them three, I got to get at some point, man. Well, you just said Cole. I forgot that Cole really went and hooped in Africa. That's why I thought he was about to sign his highlight tape. I thought <laughs> he was about to say, send me his highlight tape. Nah, but he he really he really loved hoop. So like, what I do send him sometimes is like. When I see other rappers that's actually nice and hoop, yeah. I always send him a clip of him like, "Hey, he might like he might be able to get you." <laughs> <laughs> I know he'd be tight. <laughs> he probably be hot. <laughs> Who you think better, him or Chris Brown? Uh, Chris Brown. I think Chris Brown like he just he a athletic like he a yeah. acrobatic motherfucker. Nah, he, like, he just man. he can hoop for real. Like when I see his clips, he look. Like a young player, you know what I'm saying? That's tough, y'all. Damn, Cole. <laughs> That's tough. I don't know. <laughs> nah, I'm taking Chris. I mean, Brown. Chris probably more athletic. He but. more athletic, but Cole like really love hoop though. Yeah. So that Cole you know, that been could in give the with them. The best rap hooper is Dave East though. Going to hoop in Africa is crazy. Dave East hoop. Dave East the best. He it's a dude named it's this dude. It's a rapper. He ain't like super big. His name Dax though. I had he nice in hoop. Oh, we got somebody from Indiana that rap for real. That's nice. Yeah, Dave East is like that though. That, like Dax, I'm telling you, look him up on Instagram. Look really nice. Look up Debo from Indianapolis. Yeah, he really D one. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. was IU. He really, he really liked that. Shout out to Dave East. Oh, you know Doomis? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know Doomis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He grew, he Morgan, like, that was a crazy sickness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He gagged over to me. <laughs> 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 hey, bro, it's a rapper that's nice and hoop that I'm doing a blank on. A rapper? Uh, Gilly? Gilly nah. the kid? Gilly can hoop. Nah. Gilly can hoop. Though. He can't hoop. Nah, Gilly can hoop. I ain't gonna lie, he be hooping in the <laughs> little. Uh, <laughs> Gilly a big game. three MVP, bro. He is. So NLE Chopper can hoop, too. Yeah, you can tell. He played AU for the show. I yeah, see he can hoop, bro. That's That's a few. It's a yeah. Who I'm, I'm? It's somebody I can't think of right now, bro. That rap. Nobody we grew up on. <laughs> he said, "Nah, he's not." <laughs> no. Simba, I see you in the All Star game too, bro. <laughs> nah, that ain't, your, that ain't your speed. You, you got bars though. <laughs> Who for that shit? But you one of my favorite. Hey, you you got bars, bro. I can't. Y'all tripping, Cam? Cam? Cam can hoop. Yeah. You know, we ain't doing this on the show, but R. Kelly can hoop. Oh, why? 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 We was talking about musicians why? that can play basketball. You know what I mean? We ain't, we ain't hey, got to tell you. always out of pocket you, all the time. You know, I just, y'all know Did I you see that team uniform? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in this. Come on, get Dame out of here, man. They got this camp shit to get back to. <laughs> I'll wrap this shit up. <laughs> no, nah, before we got it, we can't let you go, bro. You top 75, man. You had that moment to be there at that ceremony, man. What's that like, bro? Honestly, it was it was crazy, bro, because I didn't when they first announced it, I started seeing like lists of like this my top seventy five, this my top seventy five. So I thought it was just like a trend that, you know, people yeah. were saying who they thought their top seventy five players were. And I remember driving to the gym one day and somebody called me like, You made it. I'm like, like, what you talking about? And they sent me a picture of it. You know, they had the little thing around your head. Yeah. And they was like, you made it. I'm like, so they actually put like a committee together to like pick 75 players. And and once I found out I made it, I'm like, well, shit, who didn't make it? So I look and see some of the people that didn't make it. And I'm like, damn, this like, it was the first time that I was like, they really looked at people's like body of work, yeah. like the availability, them winning, like what they've been able to do consistently. Like this ain't like no all-star voting. It ain't popularity content it ain't none of that it's like what have you done so like that's why i that's why it meant so much for me because it was like i could think of bigger names and you know people that you if they had to say 75 players that they might just off the top of their head put them in front of me yeah but when you look at the body of work it's a lot of players in the league that like it's probably like james kd russ steph Bron. um Damar, but after that, Chris Paul. After that, it ain't nobody that got more career points than me. That's a fact. And like they all been in the league for three or more years longer than me, and I ain't far behind. So it's like, like I said earlier, that been like with me being in the playoffs on a vet team and on a rebuilding team. We didn't, we started rebuilding. We was right back in there, yeah, like exactly. right back in the playoffs, eight straight years. So it's like. That was the first time I was like, like they made the right decision. Yeah. Like people ain't gonna see it right now, but when they look back at like what actually took place, they're gonna be like, he should be in there. 
and then you know we got to uh to Cleveland for the like 75th anniversary event and just being in the room and seeing you know Kareem and Magic and it's crazy. Like seeing all of these dudes, that was the first time I was like, like, should I even be in this motherfucker? Yeah, like, this crazy, crazy to be crazy. in here and I'm like yeah. one of them. And being in a picture and taking a picture with, you know, the other Oakland point guards, it was, you know, GP, J Kid. Like being up there with them, it was like I'm amongst this group. But I say that like the craziest part, and I told this story, I think, on uh on Q Rich and uh and D Miles show. Shouts like, and Knuckleheads. On knuckleheads, like everybody was there, but when when Jordan walked up, that's when I was like, "This man is like not even a real. Is he even <laughs> a real person?" Like it was probably eighty cameras surrounding like the other seventy four players. When he walked up, it was probably his own set of Dang. sixty cameras, and he walked up, and it was like you could see right away he ain't like. We part of the top 75, like, he's the one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, he a part of his own group. And, that, like, that was when it was the most obvious to me. Like, seeing him walk up, even when you was in a building, when they called his name out, it was like, nigga, we could all leave now. Like, <laughs> let him go up there by himself. That's how loud it was. It was like that shit wasn't real. It's crazy, bro. Top Damn. 75, bro. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, That's crazy. like, you know, coming from... No name AAU team in Weber State to yeah. get to top seventy five, bro. I don't. I probably because you dream that. Nah, I said it yesterday when I was talking to the campers. When I was just telling them, like, I was stressing to them, like, all of the people that's working camp that's not like a NBA coach. Like even the the counselors, the you know, a lot of the staff is like they coach me. I played with them. They played in college. Now they coach in college or they coach in the NBA. Like they got credentials. Yeah. But they also witnessed my my story and everything that I went through. So they they know that none of the stuff that we doing, it ain't just no, oh, I'm a star now. Let's make sure, let's, you know, act like he know everything. He ain't have no, you know, he ain't do nothing wrong. This shit was seamless. Like they've been there for the whole thing. So they witnessed it and they can share the same message that I'm sharing. And they've experienced it through me, but they also know like the formula or Formula Zero is not me saying this is what you got to do. Mm -hmm. I'm a product of the formula that all of these people make up. And I'm I'm sharing that with them. And I was like, the reason why it's important for y'all to like be invested in this and to embrace everything that's happening here is because I don't need nothing from y'all. But because of all of this stuff and like my ability I've been able to accomplish way more than I ever would have thought. Like, I would have never been like, I'm about to be top 75. Yeah. Like, even when they was talking about top 75, I wasn't thinking, oh, I'm in there for sure. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I never could have, I never could have dreamed of it going like this. Nah. You know what I'm saying? I was just, when I came in the league, I was like, man, I might spend some time in the G League. Literally, I was literally thinking that. Yeah. I might spend some time in the G League. Shit, I might, I might, Go to Miami and be playing with Brown and D Wade yeah. and be just a shooting point guard. Like shit, I don't know, but I could have never uh, dreamed of everything that's happened happening. And that's why, especially with you being top side of five and deserving of that for sure. Yeah, sure like you sure, said, sure. you get overlooked a lot on the time change. Like you said, it's always voter fatigue and room for people. But like, yeah. you could talk about all the newer guys. There's a lot of younger point guards in the league, but still. Yeah. You still hold your ground. You still do your thing. You still set the standard with that. Yeah. Before we get out of here, it ain't got to be in no order. Just know what I'm saying? Who's some of your top five players? They ain't even got to be the best. Or who's some of your favorite players? Right now? Just period. I'll say right now. Because if we say period, it's, it's a lot of people I can't leave off the list. All right, you already know. Niggas get the wallet. So right now, I'm going to go uh, Anthony Edwards. I think everybody... Super exactly. high on him right now, but yeah. I like him because of his energy, like his swag about him is is authentic, and he got the game to go with it. So I'm gonna go Anthony Edwards. I'm gonna go uh, Ja Morant. Shout out to Ja. Um, you know he got in some trouble, so I think people kind of turned off to him a little bit. But I mean, I I know what I'm looking at. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna go Anthony Edwards, Ja Morant. Luca, 
Um, I'm leaving somebody out. Yeah, Joker. Mm. And um, Giannis. That's my five right now that I'm, like, when I'm watching and they like my favorites, I'm going to go with them. So oh. far, our team. That backcourt, Trenchy. <laughs> Trench babies. <laughs> they talking about that's going to be a 2020 20 Olympic team. I'm like, hell yeah. What you picked was a lot of Oakland. Like, I said, he from yeah. Oakland. I mean, I'm a, I mean, I'm going with, like, obviously younger players. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, that's what, you know, that's the group I go with. But they all, like, real, though. Like, when you watch them, you can tell, like, yeah. I hang out with him, bro. Yeah, like, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, John Morant. He come on 38 for yeah. me. Yeah, you know for saying? sure. Anthony take, Edwards take, is take definitely. Yeah, he, he can go cloud nine with me for Anthony sure. Edwards is definitely one of us. Yeah. For yeah. sure. 100%. Both of them. It was funny even seeing Joker. He was like, when the Olympics, he was like, all right, that's cool. I'm about to kill him with my niggas. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm at sure. He was lit. Yeah. Drinking beer, watching horses for sure. I know Luke <laughs> is sure. smoking a square somewhere. So. Hey, don't put that smoke on Luke. He ain't smoking no square. Come on, man. He, he ain't off the new ports getting fit. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. He smoked squares. Oh, that was a beer. Y'all wild. Oh, take a beer. Wild. <laughs> nah, Dane, we appreciate you, though, nah, bro, for, for sure, pulling man. up for on the show. Man, bro. Thank I'm a man. We appreciate you making this happen, man. Y'all know what it is. Club 520. Like, share, subscribe. Be here and tell the people they can grab some merch at. Shopclub520.com. For sure. We appreciate y'all. Catch y'all next time.